Hello, dear friends. It's such a joy for us to talk about Israel. Welcome to Israel Essential. Well, we have been talking about the culture, the people, and the technologies of Israel. Today, we have Pastor Steve Curry, the President of the Holy Land Missions, and it's a joy to have you with us, Pastor. Uh, we were talking about the Israel and Palestinian conflict and how to adapt uh, in this circumstance. Uh, you are both Israeli and Palestinian, yeah. and uh, how do you base your identity? What do you base your identity on? And uh, how do you move ahead with your mission? That's a good question, Dr. Paul. Thank you for having me. I, I love to always start this. And my father, I learned this from my father. He always said this statement growing up. There is enough room in the heart of the father mm. to love the Jew and to love the Arab. Mm -hmm. He would always say as well after that, you can't love the Jew and hate the Arab. Mm -hmm or love the hair, Arab and hate the Jew. Mm. That's not the heart. At least for our, fa our father, our Abba, the God of the Old Testament, God of the New Testament, there is enough room in his heart for both. Growing up as a young boy, I went to Arabic school in Bethlehem mm. up until fourth grade. Halfway through, I was moved to another place. Uh, but in schools, in the community, you're always taught you have two enemies. You have the devil and you have the Jews. Mm. That's why we were brought up in the streets yeah. um, as, as, Arab, as young Arabs. Mm. Uh, and then I would go home and it also would be taught that God just washed his hands from the Jewish people. It's, they betrayed him um, in the wilderness and in the desert. And they murmured and they complained. They worshipped. Like, all these things to sort of uh, belittle the heart and the mind of, of, of a Jew mm -hmm. and their self-worth. This I'll go was home, in the Arabic school. Arab schools uh, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then I would go home. Thankfully, I had a mother and father at that time. I'm a second generation believer. Mm -hmm. uh, my father became a born again believer in Jerusalem through an evangelist who was walking the streets for, for 10 days, a Western uh, evangelist from America, oh. became a believer. And then uh, my mother became a believer and our family became believers. So I'm a second generation born again. Um, but then I would go home and, and the reality, what we'd hear in the streets would clash mm. with the, my mother's bedtime Bible stories. She would force us to get on our knees <laughs> to 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 read a Bible story, and, she, and, and, and some of these stories were uh, Abraham, Moses, Samson, David, Solomon, um, Joshua. And mm. we'd hear these stories, and then the next day I'd go to school, and I would see there was a conflict between yeah. uh, my mother's bedtime side stories and and, and what I would hear in the streets. And thankfully, I tell people mm -hmm. my mother's bedtime side stories won. <laughs> mm. um, I started to realize that the God that we have is a covenant promising keeping God mm. and I learned that even deeper when I was physically beaten physically attacked uh, for discipling a young man who came from a very large Muslim family oh. and that physical beating in, in the middle of the in the middle of the beating on the ground I shouted I said Lord if you get me through this I love you I'll serve you I'll do more for you wow. that's just get me out of this beating and I, I tell people I would have said anything at that moment mm -hmm. in pain but at that moment I also understood my identity mm. that I am I, I find restitute and I find hope in, in fulfilling the calling I have, which is clarifying misconceptions of who Jesus is. Beautiful. And, Beautiful. Uh, and so these personal, personal experiences, mm -hmm. it brought me to know who I am today. Mm -hmm. That I am placed on earth for a reason, for a purpose, and that purpose and that reason is bigger than, than, than I can ever touch or I can ever be. Uh, and that's my message to every, everyone around the world is to know your identity. You've got to deep, dig deep into your deepest moments, into mm -hmm. your, when you're bottom of the hill, mm -hmm. uh, because only then can you hear the, the, the voice of God clearly. Mm -hmm. So it's the spiritual relationship with God. That gets you to know your identity. You base your faith as your identity and you love everyone yeah, regardless. you love everyone regardless who they are you love the arabs love. you love the israel because of god, god who loves god of both love. of them yeah yeah it's so good wow it's wonderful and uh, uh, you have the ministry in bethlehem we do and uh, what is happening in bethlehem in terms of uh, the gospel the christians and so on you know, uh, Dr. Paul, even though ISIS has not entered Israel, uh, thank God, uh, no, uh, you know, some of the ISIS ideologies uh, have entered the Palestinian communities, mm -hmm. areas like Bethlehem and Ramallah and so forth. But the Palestinian Authority have, have done a great job, believe it or not, mm -hmm. done a great job in working with the Israeli intelligence departments to sort of try to, try to 
you know, uh, cover these and bury these mines, uh, the ideology, uh, before it ever gets spreads out. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ISIS, what's happened in the Middle East, has woken up a lot of Christians around the world, mm -hmm. uh, specifically Middle Eastern Arabs. Mm -hmm. And has also woken up a lot of Muslims in, in, in the Middle East, especially Muslims in this country. And they looked at ISIS, Syria, and so on and said, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to have kids. I want to have a job. I want to buy a car. I want to buy a new phone or, or whatever whatever worldly, carnal, um, uh, short time, you know, uh, pleasures people can get out of uh, these technologies. Uh, but they also made them realize they don't want that. But then that also pulls them to ask the second question, what do I really want? Mm -hmm. And, and so today in the Palestinian communities like Bethlehem and Ramallah and so forth, things I would say are a lot better than what they, what they used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, there is still persecution, there's still suffering, you know, you still can't convert and the Palestinian converge and so forth. That's why I don't believe in conversion, I believe in seeing the light of Christ. Wow. And I always talk about, I have, a, I have a teaching on when Paul's journey to Damascus, it, it, you've heard it preached, Paul's conversion to Damascus, I'm mm -hmm. sure you've heard it preached. It never says Paul converted. It says Paul saw the light. Mm, fantastic. And there's a big difference, and we'll, His we'll talk heart about this. What's changed? It's hard. It's heart change is seeing the light. Mm -hmm. um, and for the Palestinian Israeli dilemma, the conflict, I think this young generation, we talked about it in an earlier segment, that the younger generation, they're realizing hope is not through violence, hatred, or, 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 or sitting across the table and crossing your arms. Hope comes by sitting down, talking, sharing with your heart, what do you want to see happen, mm -hmm. and talking about the future, what it could be, and seeing what it could be. Mm -hmm. I'm hope. I'm very optimistic. It's it's a temporary optimistic until the Messiah comes, uh, but until then, we have to be, you know, blessed are the peacemakers. <laughs> uh, but uh, I see uh, the young people want peace and uh, uh, they are not basing their identity most, mostly on faith, but they want peace, they're culturally, uh, they want to be together and so on. So at this point of time, if somebody puts their identity on faith and then uh, uh, they say, I'm gonna live for God as you went through suffering, uh, are the young people willing to take that and make that uh, uh, sacrifice for the Lord? I think subliminally, uh, human beings, specifically the Jewish people and the Arab people, we are emotionally driven, we're, we're culturally driven, we are family driven. I think that's very much alike like yes. your culture as well. Um, if something makes my father happy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all I can, I'll break my back to make it work, or, or my grandfather's name to be honored again in the community. There's a context of, you know, it's called f family honor. Uh, I, I believe we all have it within us. It's just that we, I'm gonna say we, I mean those have not found the light, have not seen the light, they have not they have not heard the right kind of message to inspire them enough to to be all in mm -hmm. and i think they're watching they're they're i think the arab world today are watching for an arab leader mm -hmm. uh, that, that 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 represents the faith context rather mm -hmm. than a political a political context mm -hmm. they're waiting for someone to step up to the to the arena to begin to speak a message that could resonate with everybody mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but they might not like it all but there, it resonates within them that the, this could be the only option mm -hmm. and that's context of going back to the roots of love forgiveness and grace which by nature itself embodies who Jesus is. Mm. If a young person finds the light with the parents not subscribing to one's views, is it tough to survive, both Israeli and uh, Palestinian, at this point of time? I think this young generation is very stubborn. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think, uh, so, the, so is the older generation as well, stubborn in their own ways. But I, I you know, a, last night I got an audio message from a, from one of our young disciples. We have an evangelism team that uh, with full-time evangelism team, that's all they do, sharing the gospel. And I got a message, maybe it's 1 a.m. this morning. A, one of my team leaders asking me about this young girl who actually a year ago was beaten up by her family because they, they found her reading the Bible. Mm. A, two years ago. Mm. Um, now she got married. She got married about five months ago. And now she's living with her, with her father for, for her husband's traveling. Mm -hmm. Young couple, maybe 20, 19 and 21. So now her father, so the message last night was, uh, this, one of our leaders saying, Pastor, the father's girl wants to meet you mm. because he sees so much change in her life and her. Wow. So uh, this is the same family that beat her up a year ago, two years ago. Uh, so it's persistence, uh, standing strong, uh, having, uh, believing what you believe and not, uh, you know, you might have doubts, you might go through a context where you're questioning things, but then that's okay. That's, that's how you, you derive to more of a, a solidified answer. Uh, and that's okay. Um, our God is holding on to the faith 
and living the life Live with life. Christ. And, and, and with that message, I mean, now his father wants to, he wants to know what has happened to his daughter. He wants that same peace. Wow, that's fantastic. And only God can do that. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Dr. That Paul. That was a great revelation. Thank you. May God bless you and your ministry abundantly. God bless you. Thank you so much. Sharing the gospel is sharing the light that is in you. And that's what is happening in this part of the world.